Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional grade industrial supplies. Count on real time product availability and fast delivery. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Portions of the following program are pre recorded. Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. Well, there's, there's news on Neuralink. Really? So, for those of you who have not been following Neuralink, Neuralink is a brain computer interface uh, brought out by, well, Neuralink, which is an Elon Musk company. I, the chip in the brain, it basically. Yeah, it I, I don't know if he, we haven't heard a lot so, about the patient, though. Well, I, I do have ding, the ding, patient, ding. a 29 year old man named Nolan Arbaugh. Finally, we know who it is. Who was paralyzed from the neck down. Neck, neck down. It, we were thinking about that. Yep. We were thinking that was. The patient he's able to control a cursor on the screen using Neuralink's device. He's able to play games online for about eight hours, and that's what I was going to bring up. He was playing chess with somebody. Just thinking, moving the rook to blah blah blah. When I, I mean, I don't know how that works, but I don't know if he's thinking that you're moving the the king to king's knight four or whatever it is, right? I mean, I'm. Just making that up because I don't remember much about chess anymore. I can still play the game. I just don't remember the square. I games. don't remember. I, you know what? I don't know. Why. I can play, but I don't. I've yeah. never known. The, there was a time I knew. Yeah. I actually, I, I know the Star Trek version of chess. Oh my goodness! Better. Are you the serious? Three extra layers. The three layers of the three D chess. Today? Yeah, the three. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Impressive. Uh, yeah. So he's able to play games online for about eight hours before the implant needs to be recharged. Okay, that was my question. Do you have to plug him in after a while? Wireless. Well, yeah, because it's working off of Wi-Fi, but, you know. No, no, it's wireless. Like, like you charge your watch. Oh, so, you, like, a, instead of a charging pad, it's a charging pillow? Probably. Yeah. Something very similar to that. He probably, when he goes to sleep or something, my guess is that it, it recharges, because it's a Bluetooth. Right. Uh, scenario, that, and that's how this works. It's There's Bluetooth talking to the computer now the other side of that though is so we as humans are electrical beings and, and it looks so, at that pattern yeah so at some point are they going to be able to just charge off of the normal electrical current of the human body because yeah, I, we all have a charge i don't know about that and i also think about you know will that offset the balance that we have in our bodies now i mean can we take a little charge and that's not a big yeah. deal uh i don't know well that's what a pacemaker's for when somebody's electrical impulse for their heart right. is out of whack right and that's what a pacemaker does right. so but but that's not working off the body's charge right it still has a battery yeah. and that type of thing so i don't know the answer to that it's interesting the other it's like the matrix people have talked about this in the past and and there are there are like charging units for like when you walk so that yeah. that that as you walk and your hips move a little bit and move some type of pendulum or something back and forth uh and that actually creates a little bit of a, a you know a current uh that charges a battery that could potentially charge your cell phone and, and we're not talking when you s shuffle your feet on the carpet right it's not a static charge but there's been talk of that too there's, there's new carpet in our bed there's upstairs and how's that going oh my you? gosh it's i i that 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 do you, do you, do I do you, it on purpose. Do you like grit your teeth before you hit the, the light switch in the room? Like, no, no I don't want to turn it off. Ah! No, but I, oh. I might grin a little bit when I touch Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> Too sadistic. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> hey, honey, come here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but think about that though. So you got to think. So we're about energy. So a calorie is energy. Um, we have an electrical charge. We generate heat, which is another form of energy. So at some point, and maybe it's a combination of those three or one of those three or two of those three, but at some point you would think that that chip's going to be able to operate as a, just a, a low voltage add-on that you shouldn't have to charge. I'm glad you're saying it that way, the low voltage part, because I was afraid if somebody was listening to us right now and thought, 
Hmm. I wonder if I could charge my electric car this way. <laughs> well, instead of sitting stuck on the side of the road, I mean. And and y- yes, you can. You just have to walk 100,000 miles to get enough charge to get you home. Which is three miles away. So just if you run out. Push the car home. Yeah, you'll be down. You'd be better off to push the car home. Push the yeah. car home and then you can drive at the last right. one. Right, right. Exactly. So, yeah, I I don't know. It's it's possible. There's there's been there's been some work in this space, and and I could see someday where we have a wearable that maybe we put on our belt or something like that that would actually charge as we would do our normal day to day thing, and then you at night, or maybe it's just your backup battery. You still charge your phone up or whatever normally, and then uh, uh, during the day sometime if you run low. But and if it's acting up, if you cross your legs, the garage door goes up. Something like so, that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but are we, are we going to need that anymore when we have a battery that's coming out that's going to last for 50 years in your cell phone? Probably not. I wonder how they're going to do that. Are they going to just make the battery last two years because they want you to update your phone every two years or less anyway? Or would it be really expensive? Or will it be? People are going to want the latest, greatest. Uh, so you bought the iPhone or the the. Didn't get the 24. I got the 23. I know. Don't follow. 23. Don't fall over. But the 24 was coming out in two months. And I actually. Couldn't opted, wait. I actually opted for the 23. Uh, I'm surprised you still have it. It's. Because it's you. For me, it's really surprising. But I'm. Maybe, I got the 24. Maybe getting past that. But yeah, you just. But you the, just got it. That's with the funny. AI. How do you like it so far? I do. I, I haven't fully played with it. But I'm. Have you used AI? Yeah. Yeah. And. And. and a lot of the assistant stuff, I, I did play around with the translator, which is really cool. Really cool. It's like, oh, because I actually pulled up some um, foreign language films just to go, okay, what's, what's this? Because I spent four years taking German in high school and college and never got proficient to where I could speak it. I could understand it. I could read it, but couldn't speak it. And I'm like, why did I waste four years for the, and the reason I did is because I'm a big World War II history buff and I wanted to watch war movies without having to read subtitles. And that's the whole reason I took German. And I could just, I could hold the phone up. I, you don't have to read a subtitle. I, it, it's amazing. And there's nuance to it. So, because a lot of, and we've had this discussion on, on AI, a lot of the, the nuance that goes into language that AI with chat GBT just didn't have, it, it's learning, it's getting better, but it didn't have the nuance in, in language. It's there. It, it picks up a lot of the nuance. So if somebody says something and there's an inflection on a certain part of a sentence or a certain part of a word, it'll pick it up. So I am very impressed with the, the translator, um, the translation side of the AI in my phone. It is, I'm like, I, I'm a little blown away. I get, it's way further beyond what I thought it would be. I think for most people, if you've used like Google translate before, um, where we're going with translation is incredible. I, uh, um, even with ChatGPT, it is real easy. You just, in ChatGPT, you just open the window up and, and you say, I'm going to speak to you in English. Please respond in German. And then the next words, you're, you just tell it. And the next words you're going to hear after that, that when you're prompted will be from German. I want you to translate that back to, to English. And it does it for you. Hey, Chad, eat liebe dich. <laughs> it's really... It's really incredible, you know, and we'll maybe in another in a, a segment down the road here. I should bring everybody up to speed with what I'm doing with with artificial intelligence because I think it'll blow some people away. But um, the, and there's some amazing stuff out there. Absolutely, it's, like we talk about a lot of it at, here and a lot of different spaces with artificial intelligence. But it seems like the technology, a lot of the stuff that's behind the scenes right now that people don't know about is where there's a lot of innovation taking place. It's incredible. It's so incredible what's going on right now. You know, you, you have this this scenario where I feel like, and I was just listening this morning about the pandemic, 
And they're basically, you know, there's stuff coming out right now that's stating that our students are a half a year to two thirds of a year behind in, in their learning. Can AI catch them up? Well, I, I've heard that discussion. Sure. Uh, but they're, they're behind on that. So then you, you feel like, you know, the current crop of students that are coming out of our, our uh, educational system are going to be a little behind, right? So I, we continue to seem to be dumbing down to the lowest denominator in classrooms. And then that's a whole political thing. And I'm not, I'm not going there at all, but. And what it, movie is that, Marlo? One of the ones yeah. I reference all the time. Idiocracy. Idiocracy. It's, We're becoming dumber as a society. And I, and I, 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 I look at that movie and the more I, I think about prophetic. that, movie, it's, it's like, it's like a documentary of our future. It's yeah. just unbelievable. It's coming to fruition. It is. And anyway, yeah, but I look at that and I'm like, how is it that we continue to advance these other things so quickly? You know, is it because of artificial intelligence that, that you know, we don't have to be so smart anymore because AI is going to do these things? But the artificial intelligence is what, you know, and, and this is where I, I battle with it is, is it going to help us be smarter? Is it going to fill in the gap where we are dumbing down as a society or is it going to exacerbate the dumbing down of society because people get lazy yeah and, and people can be inherently like lazy wally yeah like the movie wally when they're out up in the spaceship and they just don't even know what to do anymore because the ai just takes care of them damn we're out of tang what do we do now yeah oh look there's tang i like tang i still love tang i like tang too i, I made a still around yeah i've seen it forever i went and got a thing of tang last summer and made a five you know one of those uh uh picnic cooler uh, five gallon things. things yeah yeah the igloo yeah i made i made a whole thing and uh leaked and the ants always get the ants. yes exactly <laughs> but filled my glass full of ice filled that full of tang and i'm like oh my goodness i have missed you oh yeah <laughs> that was so good and now you got me thinking about it again i, I know I, again. I loved tang when i yeah. was a kid yeah it was kind of a that special little treat. Ants get all over it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that usually lemonade. Yeah, that's true. Lemonade was the worst. Right? Lemonade well, and it was it, sticky. And what was it about pink lemonade that was worse than yellow? Lemonade? I don't know, but it certainly looked better. That's all I'm gonna say about it. E. Super Talk twelve seventy. Talk of the town on Super Talk twelve seventy. It's all about the AI. I. Yep. So you don't have to be a pirate either. I'm I'm amazed at how things continue to progress so rapidly in artificial intelligence. But in order to boy, do we have I'm gonna back up just a little bit here. So AI People think it's advancing way too quickly. I mean, a lot of people feel this way. Hence the whole European Union putting the clamps on artificial yeah. intelligence. They, they're legislating against the progression, the natural progression of artificial intelligence. They're, they're locking it down a little bit. And I think you're going to see some of that probably here too. You know, I just, I just feel like there's going to be... You know, my concern is, is like an iRobot, for example. I'm going to start using your analysis right. type of stuff, right? I mean, if we don't get the language right, one right. little one little nuance off, and I don't know how you make it so there isn't some nuance, right? Um, Twenty years down the road, it's going to get exploited by AI. So I just am concerned about what you said, the rules of of artificial intelligence. But now, my you, concern about that though is if you're going to put the clamps on it, then if the government's going to restrict it then are they going to be doling out licenses for who can and cannot progress with it? That that's I've got con some concerns there. So this is where I think it's really going to go. There's a natural slowdown to all of this. And it's because we don't have the resources to keep up. Really? They can't make the chips fast enough. NVIDIA, for example, who's become a trillion dollar company now or valuation of over a trillion dollars which is incredible because they were just making video cards a couple of years ago but now they're making um you know chips for today AI. apple stock it's unbelievable yeah. just unbelievable i was just if somebody had bought a thousand dollars worth of of uh stock in 
in NVIDIA just five years ago. I mean, it's worth like $128,000 now. It's just insane how much that company has gone up in value. But they put their cards into building AI chips. Anyway, um, the latest estimate is that we need three times as much power that we generate on the world right now to keep up with artificial intelligence. You and I live in, in a power... I mean, we, we produce a lot of power here in North Dakota. We used to. Um, and just a little insight for those that may not know. So uh, one of the big tech booms was a lot of crypto mining. Yes. Uh, because of our climate, you don't have to worry about heating it to the extent that cool. cooling is... Cooling in the water. 25% of the energy consumption in the right. center. And now because of all the crypto mining and some of the other technology stuff that we've had in North Dakota take place. We're not that big producer of excess energy to export That's anymore. Correct. We're running out locally. We are. And what's interesting is that there is a data center being built in North Dakota right now that will potentially use as much energy in that one center as the entire state of North Dakota does collectively. Wow. One place. One place. One place. And that includes all the other data centers that, are, that have been built in North Dakota since. So it's it's amazing how much energy these things consume. Okay, so, so you're talking that about the really, flaws of, oh, everything needs to be electric. Oh, yeah. This, That's a huge flaw. This, this puts, this, you know, and the value of electricity now is going to just go way up. And then the thing is, and this is what I think is going to get really interesting pretty soon is do you want artificial intelligence or do you want air conditioning? Because we don't produce enough electricity to run both right now because it's 90 degrees outside or 100 degrees outside. What do you think is more important? Well, odds are pretty good that the AI is going to be preferential, will get treated better than the air conditioning that you and I need because we need the AI to perform all the other stuff that's going on, like, like you know, making sure that the ambulance get the dispatched in time and, and our pizza so, delivery shows up and all this stuff. You can always ask your AI robot to, hey, it's hot, blow on me. Yes. You're a funny guy. <laughs> <laughs> but this, this, I think, is the bigger challenge over the next decade is as AI progresses and it's progressing at such an alarming and fast rate that we don't make enough electricity to keep up with it. So it's going to slow down the progression of artificial intelligence, first off, because of that, and then and because we don't have enough chips either. And then secondly, because we're going to be faced with these dilemmas in the very near future. In fact, it would not surprise me this summer somewhere that they have to make a choice, like in California or someplace, that, all right, we either are going to keep everything online you know, because the internet, the internet is basically AI too, right? I mean, that has to function because everything operates off of it now. Everything. You can't make a phone call without, without it. You can't run a credit card. You can't move money. You can't even pay for your Coca-Cola anymore. I mean, I've gone into places that don't take cash anymore, which means a lot of that, places don't take cash. that if they're not taking cash, that they can't make any transactions if the internet goes down. Which, by the way, speaking of the cash thing, and I just read this article this morning about um, why you should pay in cash instead of digital, instead of digital currency. And the example was you take a $50 bill and you pay whatever service or product you just bought with that $50 and it goes to that business owner and they have $50. They don't. Um, but digitally... $48.50. Digitally, yes. It, so if you pay with a credit card versus pay with cash... Yeah, 3% right off the top. 3% right off the top. Now, extrapolate that out over how many different transactions or take that $50 bill that gets used over and over and over again. And it was like the value of that $50 bill digitally who owns it, it goes to the banks and the companies and the value of that $50 is like three. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Actually, when you think, yeah, when you think about, this is why there's such a push on for digital currency, in my opinion, is that it's another money grab. Yeah. And it doesn't get any more. I, I don't mean to be sounding like a, it's a pun because I guess it kind of is, 
but it truly is a money grab. Three, and you take, like you said, you take that 3% over and over and over and over again. It's just incredible how much money is made in those digital transactions. And, but you and I, I mean, I have to tell you, I, when I used to go on, when I used to travel, it was always the last place I would go to before I travel was the bank. Yeah, you had I'd to get, get cash to travel. That, well, that or traveler's checks. Yeah, travel. I would checks. always carry like $300, now you're $500 dating yourself. traveler's checks with me. For those. I never used them. No, nobody did. Went and picked them up, but nobody ever used them. That's correct. You know, uh, so I always, you know, you took them back to the bank and got them redeemed. And then you had that fee that went with that too. But but there was some peace of mind to that, I think, right? Uh, not that people, if they stole your wallet, they were stealing your traveler's checks as well, probably. Although I always, I always stored them someplace else, I guess. But but anyway, uh, I, I leave now. I don't even have a dollar on me sometimes. Are we going to get to the point where we have to prioritize the different categories of AI and what AI does for us? So that, and interesting. It, yeah, if there's like what what what's essential, it's got to go essential services category A plus. And what people are going to say right now, internet is an essential service. That's correct. So that would probably fall into that A plus one. But the running of your water, food, with the running of your robot at home that would maybe uh, vacuum your house. That would be a C level. That that's a that's an interesting question and a good observation because you're right. I bet you I bet you AIs will be classified as essential service. At least some of it will be considered that, so that the power is prior to, prioritized to them. Again, this goes back to who's going to be in charge of licensing who gets to utilize this AI if they clamp down on AI. Yep. So a lot of interesting things here, and we're going to continue the conversation later. News, talk, and sports for Bismarck Mandan. Super Talk 1270. Welcome back to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. So the question is, if you're going to break up Apple, um, depending on what this litigation looks like with Apple being sued, then... What's the future look like? I, I, I'm envisioning a world where you can go in and out of different platforms. Uh, you can go from the Android to the iOS and back and forth without, you know, in some scenario where it's seamless um, and not getting hung up on the apps anymore. I mean, what what are your thoughts on what that looks like? It, uh, you buy an app right now and you own the app. But is that going to change? All right. I look at this that from the standpoint of maybe streaming services. The apps are free. You pay for the service. Um, that I think that's the direction a lot of these companies are going. A lot of them are in-app purchases. And that's what it comes, it's really comes down to the 30%. It's no longer to me what the platform is. It's, it's who's getting, who's having to pay what share of the fee. I subscribe to Netflix through my Apple device and it just goes on my Apple card every month and I control the subscriptions that way. Apple gets a 50, 30% share of what Netflix charges me for better, for worse. That's the way the system is. Yeah. I could actually subscribe to Netflix outside of that ecosystem as well and just pay Netflix directly and, and Apple wouldn't get the 30%, but I'm probably paying the same amount. So to me, it doesn't really There's no benefit for you. Yeah, there's no benefit. Now, there's a benefit with my, let's say my um, Paramount Plus subscription. My Paramount Plus subscription is left over from before Paramount Plus even existed. It's an old CBS All Access. And the deal was, if you have Apple TV Plus, we'll give you CBS All Access for nine bucks a month. Now, you want Paramount Plus, you're going to pay more. And I am paying more than nine now, but I'd, I'd be paying a lot more for my Paramount Plus subscription if I didn't, hadn't already been, had the bundle and been grandfathered in. Because I have the commercial free version of Paramount Plus for the price of um, what you'd have for, uh, of the free version now, basically. Um, if I was going to be a brand new subscriber, what I'm paying now, I'd have to watch commercials if I subscribe today. Um, but I can log into anything. I can log in on an Android device. I can log in on my phone, my iPad, my iMac, my Apple TV, my Roku. 
Um, yeah, I mean, Apple TV is even on my son's Roku TV. So you can, you can log into your Apple TV account that way and access all of our iTunes movies and the, our Apple Plus, Apple TV Plus subscription. So ultimately, it's really going to come down to what do the developers have to pay? And I don't see the consumers benefiting from Fortnite not having to pay 30%. Does that mean they're going to give me a 30% discount on what they're charging me? Probably not. Yeah. I mean, and then there's this issue of credit card fees. Um, Apple charges certain fees to be allowed to be added to Apple Wallet. Well, there's a convenience factor there. Um, I've had to get my um, credit cards are in my Apple Wallet. And I've had to get my credit cards um, canceled and renewed recently, do some um, identity theft, but I didn't have to re-enter my credit card numbers. You know, my new card number was issued to me and my new card was automatically updated in my wallet. Well, that... <laughs> okay, that's kind of crazy. Well, yeah, it's like... Used to be you had to go and you had to... You canceled your card, got a new number, you got to go out and... Um, change everything. All your recurring subscriptions, you got to change them all. Well, with my American Express, it was seamless. New charges need to be on my new number, but they automatically updated my old subscriptions to the new number. And if I had any issues, I had to go and cancel things separately, but maybe there is a con security concern there that they just automatically... Big Brother's kind of watching. Yeah. Um, but that I think that's where, the, where it's headed, is that you pay for the service. What device you're using doesn't matter. Microsoft Office is a subscription product. I have it on my Mac at home, I have it on my iPad, and I have it on my computer here at work. One fee, multiple devices. And there's this issue of password sharing. You know, everyone's like sharing passwords. Netflix cracking down on that. Uh, to be honest, I just don't know where this lawsuit's going to go. What do you break up Apple as? Do you separate out their iPhone division from their watch division from their computer division? Or do you set the App Store aside and say you have to do the App Store separately? Or are they supposed to be able to take all comers and just let... See, and that's kind of where I envision the... Uh, everything's unlocked. It's more of a broad platform. You... Your device is separate, but now we're losing the potential of um, integrating certain devices amongst mm -hmm. certain devices. So like, if you want to think of it in terms of populating a platform with, you know, I've got the watch, the phone, the computer, the tablet, and they're all integrated. Um does everything function autonomously or do all the walls come down? Because I, I can see pros and cons of the walls coming down. I mean, I don't see a benefit for the consumer in any fashion with that. So that's why I kind of wonder where the lawsuit's going to wind up going. Yeah, I mean, so my phone is unlocked and suddenly I can install apps from anywhere. But am I going to? Where, where do I go to get them? Do I go to these um, stores that don't have any controls on what's going to put out there. I look at it from the... Do you trust the security? Yeah. I look at it from the standpoint of some of the computers that come through this office for repair. Um, there are bundled programs that come with all these com these computers now. Antivirus, and it's like, but you don't, you don't need that antivirus. You know, they, there's all these upsells. So they're constantly bundling it with you. And there is the risk that you go and you start installing stuff from wherever you want. You're going to get a virus. So from the standpoint of not being able to install anything that breaks my computer, I think for some segment of the population, it would be nice to, if you're not a computer expert, to be able to, oh, I just go here and I click and it's done. Now, is that a dumbing down of the populace? That we're taking advantage of people that just don't know how things work? Um, but at the same time, you're less apt to have a problem. I've seen multiple computers come through here. People want to be able to install whatever they want. And then they go and they click on something they shouldn't. And not, suddenly I have to restart their computer and reset everything. They've lost data. 
Well, and that's the security component because it, so for one, there's familiarity and people get comfortable with what they know. Uh, hence the Apple, iOS, the Windows, they get comfortable in that platform. And then there's the security side of that because if you do open it up and take those walls down through litigation, through this lawsuit, then are you exposing people to many more nefarious things that are out there that, well, there was this level of protection when I was working within this system? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this case where, hey, this is free. Why don't I just download this version of Office as opposed to pay Microsoft? It's like, <laughs> but, but, it's, but, but it's covered in ads or it's just terrible. Or you're going to wind up with a bunch of add-ons that, Word advertise is coming with the system. Bible. Super Talk 1270. Talk of the town on Super Talk 1270. And today on the Tech Ranch. By the way, welcome everybody. Well, um, yeah. Hey, good, right? Yeah. yeah. Marlo Anderson, Steve Bakken, John Nail. Chaos. Didn't they yeah. say that on the thing and come in? Yeah. Yeah. That's why we have We're the bumper, reiterating, right? right? Okay, exactly. I'm just asking. Cybersecurity the, expert. Yeah, that's that's a surprise. Ooh, 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 ooh. And then you, whatever the hell I am, <laughs> you're 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 at the control panel. You're the king of the controls. Okay, king, king of, the of the controls. controls. King I, I love that. King of the controls. Right, I'm gonna go with that. So yeah, I was targeted last week in Vegas, I think, and and uh, we're going to have our cybersecurity specialist. I'm going to tell this story. Okay, tell the story. And well, I have other things I want to talk. We'll about. We'll let John decide. That's right. If you were targeted. That's right. Right. We're also going to be talking a little bit about Wi-Fi, public Wi-Fi, and why maybe that's not such a good idea. I think John can weigh in. John can weigh in on that too. And uh, swiper jacking, cord jacking, all this other stuff that maybe. People need to be situationally aware about when they're out in public. What is it that you really need to be careful about when you're using your cards, your personal identity? These are all things we're going to talk about today. Not tracker jackers, though. The, What's the tracker jacker? That was that killer bug from the, like a hornet from uh, the Hunger Games. I, I need to watch the Hunger Games, I guess. Yeah. It's overrated. So anyway. Our special guest today. I bring everything back to movies, John. It's, Sorry. No, you do. It's just me. It's been so, it's been a long time since we've talked, John. So John Nagel, cyber, cyber security. I always want to say cyber, but it's cyber, cyber security specialist. Cyber security. Viper security. Viper security. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. 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 So it's been a long time since you, uh, we've been talked. Long uh, long. You were, you were a, a guest often on the old tech ran. I even had the privilege of guest hosting and being Marlo Anderson 2.0. <laughs> it was fat. It got was, way too it, much hair. I, <laughs> he died for that, right? Right? No wonder it's 2.0. Marlo Marlo Anderson. He's faster. He's stronger. He has more hair. <laughs> <laughs> but no okay. So, so here's the setup. So I was in Vegas um, last week. And I was attending a convention. And I got this invite to go to this pre-CES Consumer Electronics Show thing, which I've covered, as you know, for many, many years. And they were going to be talking about NFTs and crypto and, and all this stuff that's kind of in my wheelhouse. So I got a little excited about it. The convention that I was at, I was at the convention center in Vegas. This reception was at the hotel right next door. So I could I could walk out the doors where I was going over to this other one. And uh, and I'm like, oh my goodness, this couldn't be more easy. They had actually, uh, they were going to put me up for three nights in the hotel and the whole bit. And we were going to do this tour of the facility the next day and all this stuff. So I get there and I was at the, at the sign-in desk. It was in a small room. So first of all, there was less than 50 people there. Stunned by how small this was. First, small and, first red flag. Okay. I'm, I'm checking in and this lady comes up to me and starts giving me kind of a massage. I have no idea who this is. Okay. And she's like, she does this for a few seconds. I'm like, you know, I, I, I'm uncomfortable with what's going on. And then she walks away and she goes, I'll see you in a little while. Okay. okay. So... I walk into this room, I have unusual conversations with many people, 
like weird conversations. Um, I have no idea what they're talking about. They're just talking in circles for 10, 15 minutes at a time. I literally have to stop them. The one guy actually asked, can you just send me to your website? He's like, this is too complicated to, to have explained on a website. What are you talking about? This is, this is insane. The drinks that they were offering was red and blue. That was it. You could check. <laughs> what? You could, so like red pill, blue pill type of scenario, right? And then I started asking people why I'm there. And I, I caught up to the organizer and she said, well, these are f- about 50 of the brightest people in the world. And isn't it exciting that we're here to change the world? This is like a kumbaya moment with, with the organizer. And then I'm thinking to myself, and I asked her again, I said, so why am I here? Because I'm not one of the 50 brightest people in the world. And most of the 50 people. First. Most of the people. Yeah, right. 50 50 first, 50. Yeah. Most of the people I talk to. Brightest, not best look. Are not. No, they did say brightest. Yeah. Uh, but the people I talk to are not the brightest people in the world either. So anyway, it was really weird. And then this gal comes into the room. She comes up to me and she's like, I'm so excited you're here. Was and it the same one? Same one that gave me the massage. Good. Okay. And we start talking. And she goes, and I have your contact information. So if I need to reach out. KLXX AM, Mandan Bismarck, a Town Square media station. Broadcasting from the View Community Credit Union Studio. Catch the Tech Ranch with Marlo Anderson. And Steve Bakken. On Super Talk 1270, Saturday afternoons, 1 till 4 on Super Talk 1270. Portions of the following program are pre recorded. Welcome back to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. So I just want to reiterate here, too, that, you know, I, I know I'm maybe a little more public figure than most people are, but this can happen to anybody, right? I mean, there, there might be reasons for whatever reason, you know, that people might want to target you or somebody in your family or whatever. So, the only reason I'm even sharing this story, because I would never share this story if I didn't think that other people, you know, wouldn't be impacted by it. Actually, it was but, kind of fun because I was talking to you uh, the next day and I, I kept throwing things in. It was kind of freaking them out. Yeah, yeah. It's not <laughs> freaking me out. But I but I, I do think that. I, I think that everybody's at risk here. Right. So this is why I'm sharing this story because this is not something I would normally share with people. And my question, John, is so... Going back to the information side, because he did not know this person, and how easy was it to, well, being close proximity in something as, oh, hey, I'm going to rub somebody's shoulders that I don't know, but is it, do they have advice? So my fell fell in my back pocket. And she's behind him. She's behind me doing this. So for her to have a skimming device, I mean, did they come in all way? Your shapes and sizes and they forms. Your and phone, right? They can be your phone, right? They can be your phone. It's RFID. It's, you know, NFC. NFC yeah. But also Bluetooth. We got to forget about that. If you enable Bluetooth for certain functions, oh, I'll allow people to see my network, connect right. to my network. You just kind of do that because it makes it easy to come in and be connected right away. So you had three possible attack vectors standing behind you, giving you a massage. That's more than creepy, I guess. I don't even know. Creepy. It, you know, and then, and then on, on top of it, they're invading your personal space. They're touching you and having this sultry voice, I guess, talking to you. It just, it would creep the hell out of me. I don't know if I can say, oh, you, you just did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it helped. Yeah. It helped. <laughs> well, I think we should scare people a little bit here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you should, I, I was playing with Marlo the rest of the weekend and, and, Sending a message and, and and I talked to him when he got back and legitimately he was freaked out by it and I'm like, yeah, you should be. I'm, I'm and, surprised at how easy this took place and I still don't 100 percent know for sure how she got this information, but my best guess is this massage thing that she. And did. my takeaway is, you're the guru of geekdom and you, I'm not, and. You could walk into something like that. I'm like, how easy is it oh, for dude. the average person on the street to lose their personal information in something as simple as somebody bumped into them on the sidewalk? So if I have like, so I, up until that time, I used to pay with my phone a lot. You know, I go up and I, I, I pay with NFC as opposed to a credit card. I tap my phone, pays my 
bagel bill or my coffee bill or whatever. It's convenient, right? It, oh my goodness, it's so it's, convenient. It's a wonderful technology. Yeah. But as I was digging into this afterwards, you start to think about, wait a minute, there's like no security on this whatsoever because the only way it really works is if there is no security because if you have to put a password in every time, for example, what good is that? There's, what's the convenience, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? You got the tap to pay with your credit card, right? That's kind of cool. Kind of cool. I, I know I've heard noise around. I actually have not seen that happen or heard a direct or somebody come contact me directly. Oh, I've tapped my card and it's taken something. What I do know that when it comes to phone, anything RFID, NFC, Bluetooth, that is part of what we do in our businesses. We have devices that we will put on even in a backpack. They're bigger and be further away. So you don't have to be very close to you to do this. That's the other scary part about this. So you can actually wear a backpack, walk around and proximity helps. But if they're using Using near field communication, that was probably what I, if I had a guess, I would probably point there. I wouldn't even point to Bluetooth. Well, how fast is that, like compared to Bluetooth? I mean, can they change? Can they, is the transfer rate pretty significant where they can? It, it's stuff? decent. I just don't know how wide the bandwidth is to how much data can come down. I, I don't know off the top of my head. I do know that you can move stuff pretty quick, but it sounds like she was massaging you for at least a minute. Well, I don't know if it was that long, but it was felt, a while. felt like a long time, yeah. right? Yeah, well, I was uncomfortable for a long time. And then, you know. you know, the other thing is she could have been standing behind you for a while and got closer, got closer. All of a sudden, now she gets the signal. And now I know I need a little more time, just that little bit more time. But maybe that's something for another topic. I can do a little easier. So I have a pleasure. Just, just going back to layman, uh, me. So I use my phone and I have a phone case with my credit cards and everything that's in here. My, my phone's my wallet. Um, do I need to look or should people look at having those protective cases or the shielding for their phones and their credit cards? It, it, you know, what, and, what do, do that look like? Do they, do they even work? Yeah. That's the other thing. Do, do they, they work? work? So the, there is a, there, they have to be certified. I, I believe if that card is certified by the FCC, you're probably in business, right? Because they're, they're looking at it. And there, there are some out there that do that. And you... I have not tried this, but it'd be interesting because you have those cards or the protective sleeve for your credit right. card, right? You can get things for your phone, but there's actually cards that will actually, you can carry. So Steve, I know I'm not going to say how you carry your phone and wallet, but knowing what I do, I know you could slip something in there will probably protect both. Mm -hmm. So there's a de there's devices out there that will provide that jamming that you can carry. I see. That's interesting. Right. So is it an expensive thing? I, 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 not terrible at all. I mean, okay. what's expensive? Look what you just lost. Well, that's true. But right. I'm wondering, well, you know, well, what's the barrier? Is it? Is it? You know, what? What's that hundred bucks? Yeah, it's not, it's, I would say it's under ninety nine dollars okay. typically, right? Okay. So it's not a a huge expense, but what's it worth? So if you can get the the so called jamming device, go back to you know when you drive down, you had remember you had the radar detectors and you got radar jamming. Yep. Yes, for speeding, similar similar concept here. Interesting. Do. I still <laughs> <laughs> maybe you should be sharing that on the air. Maybe. Little lead foot. I'm just saying. <laughs> Funny highway, not in town. That's okay. Well, so that's interesting. So you know, and and then like the you know, there's wallets, there's purses. Yes, as you can buy that have these coatings in them. Uh, tin foil hats. I mean, kind of like Brett too. They, they do. I mean, you even have them for your. I mean, think about your passport today too, right? So that they have them to protect your passport. But and and Kickstarter has some interesting things out there, as you know, as yeah. as a subscriber sometimes. Yeah, I love you. Kickstarter. So there's a few things coming out there that you can always look there for some of the latest and greatest. But for sure, there are jamming devices out there. I just call it a credit card jammer, and you can actually put that with your devices and cards to to actually break that interference. But you as an owner have a responsibility too. When you walk into an area and you have Wi-Fi going, Bluetooth going, all these other connections, it might may not be a bad idea to put your phone in airplane mode maybe. Yeah. You know, especially when you're at, at something like this. Now you're going to leave messages so, and you can't connect. But in this situation... So I should have known better. I mean, I've gone to White Hat before. I know you've been there as well. The yep. White Hat, why don't you explain what White Hat is? So... White, so there's three different hats in, in, in the cyber world, right? White hat, are those for the good guys. They tell you how to do things. They do things for the benefit or for the good. Black hat is the other extreme. They are nefarious. They do it for money. And then the gray hat in the middle, it, you know, they can kind of go both ways. And, you know, they might come up and say, hey, you know, Steve, guess what? You got that business out there. I found this flaw. 
you know, if you give me about 25,000 bucks, I won't expose it. You know, I'll just give it to you. You can look good and fix it. And, and the good press and you're, you're balking at it. Well, guess what? They're going to flip the gray hat, you know, front to back and they're going to go around and sell it. So they, they play the middle line. So that's what you're dealing with here. And you, know, you can think of it, the psychology of all three are dramatically different dramatically different. But I would, you know, the white hat stuff we've talked about, you know, you've got black hat in Vegas, right? Well, you have they got it, DEFCON. There. Right, right. You have all these events that go on all well, the time. So if you go to a white hat event, they always talk about half the audience isn't white hat at all. 100%. Yeah. And half is just curious. But what's happening now with AI, and I don't know if that's a topic now, rather, it's a whole other ball game. Right. It's 100% a different ball game and everybody needs to be in it right now, as scary as it is. Well, but, One thing's for sure, when you go to any of the hat events, oh, nobody has their phone on them. Nobody has their phone on. You don't wear expensive jewelry. Yeah. You you look as normal as you possibly can because they will follow you to your room. Bye. Super Talk 1270. Talk of the town on Super Talk 1270. And if you're just joining us, Mr. John Nagel in studio, our cybersecurity specialist. Beck Communications and the name of your company. Cybernet Security by Beck. They acquired us a couple of years ago because yeah. they saw the relevancy and the trajectory of where cyber is going, especially in telecommunications, critical infrastructure. So that's what we do. And we're just, we're talking about ways that, that you, I mean, there are ways that maybe people who are more public or whatever are targeted or whatever, but everybody can have these type of scenarios. And one of them is Juice jacking. What the heck is juice jacking? Yeah, yeah, there's these wonderful, we have a bunch of acronyms, but we have yeah. some really cool words. Yeah, we do. Yeah, so here's juice jacking. So juice jacking is this this need for power, right? Right. You carry your phone with you. Oh, crap, I'm out of juice. I'm at an airport. What do I do? Or, you, or public, why? Public charging stations is really where this evolved from. And you go up and you charge your phone. You plug it in. Hey, this is all cool. Well, who could ever think of... Because there's a cord dangling there that's got USB 3 or whatever you yeah, need to yeah. plug it in. And it's got five different connectors right. on it. I can connect anything Other to people's it. phones are sitting yeah, there. Yeah, tab or yeah, you set it down and away yep. you go. Yeah. And you're thinking, oh, this is fine and safe. The, the problem with that is that inside that jack, there's there's more than four wires there, but typically there's four wires. Two are for data and a couple for charging. Red and, red and black for charging, typically, if you crack them open. The problem is you plug them in, they're all four connected. So now you got a data connection. And that's where the issue comes in. So when you go out and plug these in, there's been a lot of chatter. And this has been going on for multiple years now. And it got raised again by, you know, the FCC, got raised by FBI, CISA, et cetera, that, hey, this is becoming a problem. The interesting thing is I've never heard of it happening to anybody. I know of it. I know it's 100% possible because I've got cables to do it with being in this business. So when you plug that in, it comes to your phone. What it actually does, it'll connect. It'll actually take and send some data down that line to your phone to put some malware on it. And you won't know it's there. And then as you start to move away, it, it takes hold and it'll start to execute itself. So now you've been jacked and then it'll send and transmit that data via cellular or other or allow them to get in and get contacts. So, you know, it, Anywhere you go, you see those charging stations, it's a convenience. We need power. Everybody needs more power. And uh, Tim the Toolman Taylor, right? I was just waiting for the show around Brett's here, but it's not. <laughs> so when you talk about that, what do you do, right? Everybody has portable little chargers, but it's weight. You got, I've got my, you know, 400 milliamp, 1200 milliamp little charger, but you're carrying it again. Oh, should you have lithium ion batteries on the plane? Probably not. So what do you do? You just, you take off and you plug in. Go ahead. So, so the question then is, we're talking about the cord that's dangling there. Correct. No, we're not talking about you bringing your own wall jack charger and, and plugging no. the wall. We're not talking about, um, are we talking about, okay, there's a USB port there and, and I've got my own cord. Yeah. Do you trust that USB port? You be... I don't trust anything like that, to be honest. That's all right. So, because, because the cord you have, uh, all of, everything's connected, right? I mean, it is. it's a data cord as well as a power cord. So you can, so here's a couple of things for everybody. You can just go buy a charging cord, yeah. period. It doesn't matter what's in that USB jack. So wh what do you look for when you go, okay, I'm going to be traveling and I want just a power cord, no data. Is that a two, three? How do you, how do you see that in the box? It, 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 it just says power charger cord only. You can specifically look for that. It'll say 
it'll say phone charge cord only, no data transfer. You know, when you plug your phone in right away, it comes up, you plug it into your PC and, oh, hey, would you yep, like to connect? Exactly. That, those are those other lines in there. So those are the ones you don't want. So you can go out and buy the cords charging only. There's another little trick too. If you're an Apple user, take your cord and hold it up to the light. If you can see light on both sides of it at the, at the corners, you're probably okay. If it's dark, that's a bad cord. 100% they're really? using it. Yes. So 100% you can, that's one way to do it. Is it 100% is foolproof? I don't know. I can't answer that. But I know if I can't see through it, I probably might have a problem. Right. And you can buy these cords. People can lay them out there to plug in. So, but if you have your own block, your own block, and you plug into a power outlet, you're fine. Then you're fine because it's you. It's cause, you. Because you know, there's no way that 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 data is being taken over electrical lines. A hundred percent, right? So yet it. it well, that, yeah, well I, data is yeah. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I mean, these. In fact, you can still buy these things. You plug them into your power outlet, and it it moves moves in or it moves your network well, well power, like power fiber. fiber you know and fiber has yeah. the ability for carrying electricity and carrying but but the, i'm gonna data. get that block that you buy there's no data transfer no. going on at that block no so even if even if that receptacle could move data there's no way that that block's gonna let it go through anyway it wouldn't because there's no connector right it, exactly. it's just positive negative that's right? exactly right there's nothing else out there so you know and there's a couple other things out there and i know this might sound a little crude i don't intend it to be but go to amazon or go to the web and they're called usb condoms and they are just little little things you can carry in your pocket size of a quarter you plug that in first and then plug your cable into it That'll take care of you. Really? But it's really nice to have, right? They're inexpensive. Buy them a five pack for 10 bucks, 20 bucks, but you've got them. So if you lose one, not a big deal, but it's easier to carry that sometimes than a big power pack yourself. That, that weight in your backpack seems to get heavier and heavier and heavier. So if I can, if I can, if I can find little things like that to help. It's kind of your line you're flying to. Yeah. Yeah. That's the other one too. Yeah. Well, interesting. So. Are there other little things out there besides juice jacking? And we're going to get into Wi-Fi in the next segment. But anything else that you can think of where people can easily steal your data as you're walking around? So the data, not so much when I think of physical data. I'm talking about documents that you have on, stored on something. What, what's interesting to me in this field is having people connect to something. You know, public Wi-Fi. Um, and being able to not recognize is that actually Starbucks or Star B U K S, right. Right? right? And those are very easy to put up. And well, I always ask that if somebody goes, Hey, you need to download this app. And I'm like, okay, show me the picture of the app that you think that I need because there's little nuances that could be different. Uh, you and I had a conversation about acorns yeah. Yeah. and there's a corn, there's a corn yeah. there. There's a bunch. It's all of that. Right. Hey, one other question on, on yeah. the charging thing too. What about charging pads? Charging pads. I, I haven't, I haven't seen an issue with it, but you think about it. We just actually, they were giving away a bunch of them at a show I was at this week. You, know, you plug them in, you set your phone up on there, and away you go. And I haven't thought about that one yet, but I'm just wondering if some of those are out there too that can be jacked that way. You, you know, you're talking Bluetooth or something. You, that's what I'm, yeah, 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 and, and, and NFC field. B or whatever, yeah. So there, I don't you know, the other thing too, and in this going back a little old school, going to different conferences and, and businesses used to hand out uh, the USBs. Oh, don't ever pick those up. Don't ever. No, no, <laughs> million dollar, no. Leave those alone. Don't go there. Um, but, but you know, the last thing that, you know, here just to go back to the public Wi-Fi thing, you can sit down at Kirkwood Mall right here in Bismarck, North Dakota, and you can put up your own little Wi-Fi. And we use some tools out there and, and you can just sit there and, and just sit right in the middle of Kirkwood Mall at a bench and just relax with your computer. And it's funny how by people walk by and they'll connect. And when they connect and they know, oh, I want to log into something. Connecting is one thing, but as soon as you log into something, now your password, now your login name comes right across. And people don't think about it. So public Wi-Fi, not a bad thing, but please use a VPN. Use some type of encryption mechanism if you're going to go do banking. Just don't do that. And make sure that you're connecting to somebody that you trust. I mean, well, if you're going to be yeah. at a place, I mean, if you're at Kirkwood Mall, for example, and like you said, there's a misspelling in it or just another nuance yeah. to it. You need to make sure you're connecting to the one. Because, I mean, I, I've been in Vegas many times and I look at the Wi-Fi. Oh, my God. And I, I would bet that half of them are hackers. Well, 100%. Get in there. Okay. 
Welcome back to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. We're talking about the world of influencers and, of course, uh, proposed legislation to ban TikTok is where we're going to wind up here. But uh, going back to the YouTube side of things, I want to talk about YouTube because that was kind of the early on world of influencer. And it started out as a platform for uh, just people putting out crazy videos. And, and But it's got legs. It, it's It's got longevity. And, and things with longevity fall into a different category. I remember I got into the YouTube when YouTube started having, you know, people were posting music videos. And this was on the, okay, I'm going to date myself a little bit, the tail end of Napster and all those free sharing sites that all kind of went south because people were like, wait a minute, we're, we're, we're getting sued because we're not paying fees and, and all the legalities with the music industry. But people started posting the videos and, and you'd go to a, a, somebody's house party and Hey, somebody's sitting there on their laptop and they're running through all these different music videos because they're pulling them up on YouTube. Right. Okay. That was kind of the big push for YouTube videos. And then it got into all kinds of other stuff, but it's been around for so long now. It's kind of the gold standard because again, it's not the little quick snippet. It's there's long form stuff. I use YouTube videos for DIY projects all the time. There's so much content, so much information. Um, how does that differentiate from a TikTok? And we're going to get into the politics and the legalities of TikTok in just a few minutes. But how does that differentiate from a social media platform like a, a TikTok where all these social media influencers are there? But are they all kind of trying to strive to get to having the YouTube channel to get to over there because that's the that's the brass ring? Honestly, yeah, that's where a lot of these influencers are going for their long-form stuff. Um, with monetization in YouTube, it's kind of interesting how they have changed it, especially in the past, like, five years, for example. Uh, about five years ago, you weren't on, allowed to be monetized if you were swearing in all of your videos or if you were showing, like, oh, explicit crap. content. Exactly. Um, and then during the pandemic, you couldn't mention COVID or else they would demonetize you just because there was a lot of misinformation being spread and it was a good way for them to be like, okay, stop talking about this if you don't know what you're talking about, which is, I mean, neither here nor there but the the big thing with youtube is that yes it is long form and once you have a following there pretty much like people will come to youtube just to watch your stuff usually and especially in the era of instant gratification through instagram and through tiktok and stuff like that well and, and correct me if i'm wrong here because in my observations when i'm looking at youtube that is for monetization those people on youtube they're getting paid and it is about the monetization side of stuff. When I'm looking at the TikToks and the Instagrams and the other, so the X and the other social media platforms, there's not necessarily a monetization in the, in that because it's a shorter content for one, but it's just, there's the aspect of, well, this is where I'm dabbling. Right. YouTube, it's like, if I if I look at a video on YouTube, I know somebody's getting paid. Yes, usually. And and it's it's over a certain minute threshold, usually is how that goes. And we also track the engagement. So yeah, if right. you're clicking on a, say I'm looking at a DIY project and I'm like, okay, I, I'm trying to remember how to do that wiring or whatever the case may be. And I'll go back and look at a video and they're getting paid the longer I'm engaged right. on that site as well. So if it's a... Um, five minute video and I just needed one little snip to go, yeah, okay, that wire goes there and I'm on it for 30 seconds. Probably somebody's not getting paid a at least to the extent that if I watch the whole five minute video, they're getting paid more. So there's this, again, the metrics are different. Well, and there's this really interesting thing with YouTube. You upload a video and it guesses what your chapters of the video are going to be. You can change those yourself, but it gives it sections, right? So if you're looking for a very specific part of the video, it's got it in the middle and it shows you uh, actually on the video play wheel thing that like where most people watched it, you can see like where the most engagement is as the viewer of the video. So you're like, oh, most people found this particular spot helpful. So it's about the amount of time on the video, not the longevity of the video anymore, which is interesting. So if you have this one 30 second part of the video, but you keep watching it, you keep watching it. That's the same as watching the full video. 
if that makes sense. It does. Now, I want to get back into the TikTok uh, because TikTok, of course, the big news, we've been following this, uh, potential legislation coming out of the out of Congress yes. that will ban TikTok. And it's interesting because whether you're for TikTok or against TikTok, there's something else at play here. Now, yeah. if, from a legislative perspective, if you want to go read it, it's not one of those two big... To, we got to pass to find out what's in it. It's a 13-page um, document and pretty quick read. So if you go in and follow the language, though, there's some First Amendment things in there that... Because I always look at what are the unintended consequences to an right. issue. So, yes, um, TikTok, because of ownership, because of who owns the property on there and where that goes back to and how that platform is set up in the rest of the world versus in China. Yeah, there's some bad things there. Yeah. Um, there's some positives, but because of the political landscape, uh, if it gets banned, mm -hmm. if that legislation passes, I'm not worried about the TikTok. It's about the unintended consequences of that. Because right. when you're looking at that document, what that does gives the president with stroke of a pen, the ability to shut down any platform that individual who's sitting in the Oval Office sees fit. Right. Eventually. Yeah. Of, yeah. Of course. Uh, if I don't like that political opponent's web page right shut it down here's a stroke of a pen i don't like um the message that's being sent by this other you can shut anything down yeah i don't like x i don't like tiktok i don't like facebook i don't right. like the first amendment side of this the unintended consequences very dark and very scary so how do you navigate that? Because there's a lot of people that think TikTok's bad yeah, and want to see something happen. Sure. But I'm more worried about the unintended consequences, the other side of that. It's interesting because if you look at the the argument arguments, right, it's it's pretty bipartisan how the vote went, right? That's it's because nobody wants to be seen as as soft on whatever issue that China is. Well, the ironic part is you've got a Chinese company with a Chinese platform that's promoting free speech, which is... <laughs> Isn't that the whole thing? I mean, uh, come on. You can't make that up. Right. Well, and so no one wants to be soft on the issue. That's why it went through the way that it did. And of course, uh, we won't know if this is going to go through. It may drag its feet to November. Again, the political implications of this is so messy and murky. The thing is... The, the, the big talking points that we want to focus on really like that that a lot of people are bringing up are number one it's the, it's very addictive the way that you scroll the doom scrolling aspect of it it's very unhealthy for minds that are not fully developed whether that's you know actual little kids teenagers whatever like up until basically I know 50 year olds that mine may not be fully developed. well there you go that's kind of the other aspect you know but it is a, it's an addictive thing and it makes you want to get on your phone and just look at stuff even if you're not absorbing any of that information and that is hurtful and really it has negative effects in itself of course the the free speech stuff is really 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 murky and it's really hard to that navigate that's the scary part to me yeah i mean and so this will affect any video platform that has over a million users right but of course now that we can pass this into law what else can be passed right what's so, next exactly especially in the social media scape that's always changing and always trying to push people in a specific direction being influenced in a specific direction so and we could have got into a whole different area in the, the mental health aspect of this as well. But um, on the surface, whether you're for or against it, it's one thing. The unintended consequence is something entirely different. Super Talk 1270. Welcome back to Talk of the Town on Super Talk 1270. Well, back to putting kidneys from pigs in the toilet. Yeah, we were talking about medical yeah. Technology. So this is pretty amazing, actually. Doctors, Sorry. doctors have performed the first transplant. Blah, blah, blah. Try it again. Doctors have performed the first transplant of a genetically modified kidney from a pig into a living human. 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 Four-hour surgery was performed Saturday at Massachusetts General Hospital, which was also the first hospital to perform a kidney transplant in 1954. So that's kind of cool. The 62, the guy who received the kidney, 62-year-old manager, 
of uh, the Department of Transportation, had been diagnosed with end-stage kidney disease, recovering well and expected to be discharged from the hospital soon. As soon as they hooked it up, it turned pink and started working immediately. Wow. Like like it was supposed to be. Like no, and this is the genetic, genetically modified yeah. part is because where they've been working in a lot of spaces in and things have gotten really progressed in this area is because of the rejection side of things. So genetically modifying different organs and whether it's from a pig or from a donor, you know, if you've looked at kidney transplants in the past, you know, there's only, you know, if you've got this type of kidney and, and type a positive blood type, then you've got a very limited donor. So uh, donor pool. So they're looking at this in two ways. One, okay, people that are on the list, well, we can do the genetically modified Just, pig kidney. Is that any given time 100,000 people? Right. right or now. we can, you know, do some genetic modifications potentially to everybody's in the donor pool now. So there's a couple different layers with this technology. Right now, the pig side is the easiest one to genetically modify because you're not changing, you know, because they're thinking you might have to go in and genetically modify things while they're in the donor. Right. Which brings up a whole bunch of different questions. Well, and there's just all, all kinds of things with this, right? I mean, it's, this is such a problem uh, in the medical community because basically you have to wait for somebody to die in order to get a... Trout on the black market. That's why people wake up and... Generally, you have to wait until they're filled with ice. People to die to get these body parts, right? <laughs> I've seen movies. Yes, you have seen movies. <laughs> but generally, that's how it works. And so there's been attempts at different ways of doing this. There's even been a lot of talk about cloning humans and cloning humans strictly body part, for the yeah. use of body parts, right? And they would have this supply of body parts on hand then for people. Um, but... That brings a, a lot of, whole bunch of different really, rights at that point. Dude. So much moral issues in that, that, that too. all of that too, right? So this this seems to make sense. Of course, there's a lot of progress in 3D printing of organs. And there's a lot, I mean, really have been a lot of progress on that, especially in the skin space. Well, and it's not just the organs. 3D printing, and I've talked to some different people in different spaces, and they view 3D printing as the future of almost everything it's gonna it changes everything it does it's just the whatever medium you're working with yeah i mean you know we laugh about the the chocolate 3d printer that's then that's now becoming rather commonplace you don't have yet i'm a little disappointed yeah i've thought about it and I, i'm i am kind of surprised too because i think if alice actually knew i haven't told her this is why we don't oh but if she <laughs> knew there was a chocolate 3d printer guess who i'm calling after the show and they're four hundred dollars Oh, are you kidding me? No, they're four. This new one is about four hundred dollars, and you buy these chocolate cartridges. You just slip it in there, and then you design like the chocolate rose or or the pyramid that you want. That's uh, oh my god! Oh yeah, this entire Valentine's industry. Oh yeah, there's no doubt about it. Oh, a yeah. Absolutely, I can see all kinds of weddings. You know, I mean, it just you could you could have your face in chocolate instead of the chocolate fountain. Would you have? Everybody gets a chocolate rose. Would the Steve Bakken uh, chocolate head have a headset on with one over the ear and one behind the ear like you do now? So you realize, because that's a very unique. Well, you're the only person I know in the radio industry that does this. But Well, I, I like to listen to things in real time, yeah. too. And I, I've got a little hearing loss in one ear, and I do not put a headphone on my good ear. It just... Don't. Oh, is that what this is? Yeah, that's part of it. I, I, I will not that. do that. I, Simply because you want to make Well, and I want to hear things in real time, too. It's like when I'm doing an interview or, or talking to somebody in a studio uh, with a microphone, I I want to make sure that things match up and the levels are... That, that's the only reason I wear a headphone. Why don't you just... Because I, I, the big ones with just the one on them, you know. Yeah, I know. But sometimes if I need... Like, and. if... Somebody's on the phone, then you need both because it's a little softer. Well, and I've never, I've tried the ones with just the one on them and they're, they're not very comfortable. No, least, and the, you don't get is. real true stereo if you need real right, true stereo. Right. So, um, yeah, it's just, it, it's my little idiosyncrasy. But going back to the Steve head in chocolate, which <laughs> is a little 
uh, uh, I have to admit, it's a little disturbing because I'm thinking of chocolate bunnies. And what's the first thing you do with a chocolate bunny at Easter? You bite the head off of it. Yeah. I don't want my head bitten off. Oh. My wife does that all the time. All right. I, I don't need. Wow. Hey, although I could give her, here, if you want to bite my head off, do it in chocolate. There you go. Oh. And she'd love you then. She would love me then. Because it's okay, chocolate. It's another industry for that. You have to get one of these. I might have to get one of these. You're going to have to get one of these. I have to boot off one of the other 3D printers I have out there now, though, because there's a whole line of them, if you've noticed. Yeah. So I'm running out of space for my toys. I, I'm pretty like, sure that Alice will make room in her office for that. I see. Or in the kitchen, maybe. Or the kitchen, maybe. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Find a home for it. I'm sure you. I'm sure you're right. The 3D print. If she knew about this, we would have one. I'm going to tell her. Sorry, just telling you. But yeah, yeah. There's a 3D chocolate printer. Everybody. Yeah. And I hear they're not too terrible to. They're they're actually easier to run the way it looks than a regular 3D printer because you're not dealing with filament. Right. You're just and, dealing whopping this thing out. When this cartridge, yeah, this cartridge that harden. Yeah, and you just pull the cartridge off, put the new one in. I don't know what the replacement costs are for those cartridges. I don't print. know how much it prints. I mean, can you... And how good's the chocolate? Is it $40 and you only can get eight chocolate bars? This, you know, See, that's the, that's the secret, bar. how good the chocolate. Well, that's the thing. And I'm sure they... My guess is whether they would have probably different types of chocolate. We could make a chocolate kidney. <laughs> Did I cross the line? You're looking at me funny. I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud about how functional that would be. But, you know, and that's where we started with this whole conversation. Chocolate some, kidney pie. Some. Oh, my goodness. Go on. Will you stop it now? Oh, my goodness. Now you're hungry, aren't you? No. No. I am not hungry now. I'm just going to play at the golf ball and I'll be over here on the table as I ignore the things you say. Okay, but kidneys and the, I mean, the technology medically is phenomenal and, and, and it's the genetically modified component of that. You know, the question I, I always wonder because you see all this experimentation and it all comes back to pigs. It's like, remember back in the pig heart day? Yeah. And then pig kidneys now 17 people a day in the u.s die waiting for an organ waiting for a transplant yeah waiting for a donor. 17 people yeah. every day right now and uh like i said there's a hundred thousand on the waiting list uh it's 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 crazy so this is interesting uh xenotransplants is what this is called transplants of animal organs into people are crucial for solving the organ shortage so i could see this technology getting more popular I really can. I think this. I think this is actually until we have the three D printing thing worked out, animal transplants are going to be the way of the future for us. Patience pays off. I'm Daria Albinger with today's tax tip. Want to make a donation to your favorite cause? Accountant Janice Heyman says, wait a bit. Now, of course, with the higher standard deduction, it might be harder to get a tax break. So, what we're recommending is if somebody knows that over a course of two, three years, they will have a nice, sizable donation that they want to give. They could just bunch up their contributions for one year where it would be quite sizable. No matter when you give, get proof. Your canceled check or... If you're paying through a credit card, you would certainly have the date of the charge. You would have that proof. If you're using PayPal, Venmo, you're doing this through Facebook, perhaps... But you'll have the proof of your electronic payment. Finally, make sure that the charity is recognized by the IRS. You'll find a list on the IRS website, irs.gov, or on the app irs to go With today's tax tip, Daria Albinger, ABC News. Talk of the town. Weekday morning starting at 9 on Super Talk 1270 and the free Super Talk 1270 mobile app. Mandan Bismarck, a Town Square media station, broadcasting from the View Community Credit Union Studio. 
Hey there. Did you know Baker's always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices? And when you download the Baker's app, you'll enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And don't forget fuel points to help you save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. Want to save even more? With a Boost membership, you'll get double fuel points and free delivery. So shop and save big at Baker's today. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details.